Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're reviewing AMD's new Radeon RX 7900 GRE, which we did technically review six months ago. Well, we did actually, we definitely reviewed it six months ago, but the difference is now you can actually buy it. There are AIB models available, which is pretty unexpected because, yes, yeah, six months ago when we did review it back in July of last year, it was quietly released, the GRE, as a Chinese exclusive for what amounted to $650 US. And if you're wondering, the odd name was a Chinese reference, Golden Rabbit Edition, as 2023 was the year of the rabbit. Makes sense, right? Anyway, as I said, the GRE was meant to be a Chinese exclusive, and for the most part it was. However, for whatever reason, a single Australian PC parts retailer was able to sell it in one of their pre-built systems, and as you might have guessed, I purchased one of those systems. So, as a proud owner of an AMD reference designed 7900 GRE graphics card, I got to work benchmarking and provided a review six months ago. Since then though, a lot has changed. Several new Radeon GPUs have been released along with a slew of GeForce GPUs, and that means the original $650 US price of the GRE is now a really bad deal. Therefore, AMD has officially reduced the MSRP to $550 US, and for reasons that aren't known to us, have now released it globally, so you can buy a GRE if you want to. So, assuming that you're now interested and missed my first review, what is the 7900 GRE? In the simplest of terms, it's a hybrid 7800 XT. This means when compared to the 7800 XT, you're getting 33% more cores, which is a massive increase, but there is a bottleneck unfortunately, and that bottleneck is the memory subsystem. Like the 7800 XT, the GRE packs a 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer using a 256 bit wide memory bus, but it's armed with slightly slower 18 gigabits per second memory, whereas the 7800 XT uses 19.5 gigabits per second memory. And that means the GRE bandwidth has been reduced by 8%, so 33% more cores, but 8% less memory bandwidth. It's a bit of an odd configuration. Not only that, but the cores are also clocked 8% lower, and we do see a 16% reduction in infinity cache bandwidth. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the 7800 XT and 7900 GRE compare, especially given the MSRP of the GRE is just $50 higher. Again, it's a bit of a strange lineup. It'll also be interesting to see how the GRE combats the RTX 4070 Super, which currently costs $600 US, so $50 more than the GRE, and I'll be sure to make those comparisons. Now, what's new this time when compared to my coverage six months ago is that I now have board partner models on hand for testing. Included we have the ASRock Steel Legend, Gigabyte Gaming OC, Power Color Hellhound, and Sapphire Nitro Plus. We will be taking a look at the operating behavior of these four models towards the end of the video. So for testing, we're using our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system with 32GB of DDR5-6000 memory using the latest display drivers. All data has been validated and updated for this video, and all GPUs have been tested at their base spec. This means we've tested using the AMD reference model at the reference clock speeds and not an OC model. Again, just as we've done for all other models tested. In total, I have included 12 games, but we'll only be looking at the individual results for just a few of them before checking out the 12 game average. And then of course, we do have some ray tracing and cost per frame data. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. First up is Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, and here the GRE was good for 97 FPS on average, which allowed it to match the RTX 4070 Super exactly despite being a mere 2% faster than the 7800 XT. So a bit of a disappointing uplift there for $50. And we find much the same at 4K. Here the GRE was able to match the 4070 Super while being just 2% faster than the 7800 XT. So let's hope we have some more impressive gains than some of the other games that have been tested. And moving on to another game, we have Starfield. 1440p, we find more disappointing results for the GRE as it's just 2% faster than the 7800 XT and 7% slower than the 4070 Super. Then at 4K, we're looking at identical performance to that of the 7800 XT, making it 9% slower than the 4070 Super. The Last of Us Part 1 has more of the same for us. The GRE is only able to match the 7800 XT at 1440p, making it 6% slower than the 4070 Super. And then jumping up to 4K sees the GRE leave the 7800 XT by a mere 2% and 
while it was 2% slower than the 4070 Super. Now the Dying Light 2 results are interesting because at 1440p the GRE is seen to be 11% faster than the 7800 XT, so not a massive margin given it packs 33% more cores, but also better than the titles that we've already looked at. It's much the same at 4K where the GRE remained 11% faster than the 7800 XT, though it was 7% slower than the 4070 Super. The GRE manages to do even better in Modern Warfare 3 at 1440p as here it was 14% faster than the 7800 XT and a massive 25% faster than the 4070 Super, though we know this title does favour Radeon GPUs. Then at 4K it was 21% faster than the 7800 XT and 31% faster than the 4070 Super. In fact it was even 16% faster than the 4070 Ti Super. Moving on to Alan Wake 2, we find more results where the GRE is basically a 7800 XT. At 1440p it was just 3% faster with 63 FPS on average, which also meant it was 6% slower than the 4070 Super. And look, it's the same story at the higher 4K resolution. Here the GRE was again 3% faster than the 7800 XT and 6% slower than the 4070 Super. Finally, the last game I'm going to bother looking at the individual results for is Resident Evil 4, at least when we're looking at rasterization performance, that is. Anyway, Resident Evil 4 tested at 1440p, so the GRE outperformed the 7800 XT by an 8% margin, which I suppose isn't bad, especially given most of the results we've seen so far. And that margin was extended ever so slightly to 9% at 4K, where the GRE was even faster than the 4070 Super, beating it by a 5% margin. Okay, so across all 12 games tested at 1080p, the GRE was on average 6% faster than the 7800 XT and a mere 1% slower than the 4070 Super. And this is when looking purely at rasterization performance. So I'd say that's not great, but some of the 1080p results are CPU limited. So let's move to 1440p for a more accurate picture of GPU performance. Well, even at 1440p, the GRE, it was just 6% faster than the 7800XT on average, rendering 105 FPS opposed to 99 FPS for the cheaper model. It was also 3% slower than the 4070 Super, so a negligible margin there, but overall a weird position for the GRE. Then finally at 4K, it does manage to match the 4070 Super, despite only beating the 7800XT by a mere 5% margin. So again, not amazing, given that it should cost 10% more, and of course we will look at the cost per frame data shortly, but before we do, let's check out some ray tracing numbers. Testing RT performance with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora at 1440p, we see that the GRE is 9% faster than the 7800 XT, though it is also 13% slower than the 4070 Super. The Spider-Man Remaster results are interesting as here the GRE is a massive 26% faster than the 7800 XT, and although we didn't look at the Spider-Man rasterization results, I can tell you that the GRE was just 5% faster. So enabling ray tracing has handed the GRE a massive advantage in this title, but it was still 11% slower than the 4070 Super. Sadly, as we've come to expect, Radeon ray tracing performance isn't great in Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, and with 39 FPS on average at 1440p, the GRE might have been 11% faster than the 7800 XT, but it was still a massive 43% slower than the 4070 Super. Overall, across the 10 games tested with ray tracing enabled, the GRE was 10% faster than the 7800 XT, which I suppose is decent. That said, it was on average 28% slower than the 4070 Super, which is less than ideal given that it is set to cost just 8% less. Speaking of which, let's go over some of the cost per frame data. So when looking at the cost per frame based on the 1440p rasterization results, we find that the GRE is actually more costly than the 7800 XT, around a 4% premium per frame. So certainly not amazing. It's also just 6% better value than the 4070 Super. So the GRE finds itself in a pretty tough position. And even at 4K, it's still 4% more costly per frame when compared to the 7800 XT, and only slightly better value than the 7900 XT. When compared to the 4070 Super, you are saving around 8% per frame, so that's decent, but I'm not sure it's enough to sway gamers away from the green team. Now, for those of you interested in ray tracing performance, the GRE represents the same value as the 7800 XT, so that is to say it's quite average here. 
especially when compared to the 4070 Super, as the GRE is a whopping 27% more costly per frame. So that's pretty bad, and it means if you do care about ray tracing performance, you would be best off going with a GeForce GPU. Now here's a look at how the new AIB versions of the 7900 GRE compare to AMD's reference model, which saw a peak GPU hotspot temperature of 90 degrees. The ASRock and Sapphire models both ran at around 80 degrees, so pretty big improvement there over the reference model. They also clocked around 7% higher, and in the case of the Sapphire Nitro Plus, the low fan speed resulted in virtually silent operation. The Gigabyte Gaming OC looks really good with a peak hotspot of just 75 degrees, though the 1700 RPM fan speed meant that we could hear it over our case fans. Then in top spot we have the Powercolor Hellhound, which was very impressive, peaking at just 72 degrees at a fan speed of just 1100 RPM, while it managed an average core clock speed of 2140 MHz, so this is without question the best result. Looking at memory temps, we see that the AMD reference model ran at a rather hot 96 degrees, and surprisingly the Sapphire Nitro Plus wasn't much better at 94 degrees, though again it does operate at a much lower fan speed. The ASRock Steel Legend ran at 88 degrees, so again a mid-tier result there from ASRock, and then we have the Power Color Hellhound doing very well at 82 degrees, and the Gigabyte Gaming OC with the best result of 78 degrees, though again it does have a high 1700 RPM fan speed, so again the best result here really is the Hellhound. Then finally we have the VRM temperatures, and again the AMD reference model is the worst with a temperature of 80 degrees, though the Sapphire Nitro Plus is only slightly better at 79 degrees. The coolest result was recorded by the Gigabyte Gaming OC, but again it was by far the loudest, making the 68 degree temperature of the Power Color Hellhound more impressive. Finally, here's a quick look at total system power consumption, starting with the Hitman 3 results. The GRE pushed total system usage to almost 400 watts, making it comparable to the 4070 Ti, Ti Super, and 7800 XT. Now, although we didn't look at the Hitman 3 FPS results, I can tell you that the GRE was 26% slower than the Ti Super, so in terms of power efficiency, it's not great. Then in Spider-Man, we again see total system draw reach almost 400 watts on average throughout our testing, so a 14% increase in power usage from the RTX 4070, for what amounted to a 3% performance increase. The Radeon RX 7900 GRE has always been a bit of an odd product, and effectively relaunching it today for global consumption at $550 US it doesn't really make it any less odd. The gap between the 7800 XT and the 7900 XT has also never really made sense. Even today, the 7900 XT it costs almost 50% more and that leaves a rather large $230 US gap, and it would seem as though AMD were hoping to fill that gap with the 7900 GRE. But the GRE is just too similar to the 7800 XT in terms of performance, and really needs faster memory to fully unleash all of those extra cores. Speaking of which, memory overclocking is almost entirely locked down on the GRE, as AMD only allows the frequency to be increased by a maximum of 3%, to 2,316 MHz, resulting in a throughput of 18.5 gigabits per second. Now, when compared to the 7800 XT, you're also getting the same 16 gigabyte VRAM buffer, so there's nothing extra on offer here with the GRE, meaning for most, the $500 7800 XT is going to offer more value. Then, when compared to the 4070 Super, you do get an extra 4 gigabytes of VRAM, which is nice but not necessarily useful right now, at least in the vast majority of use cases, and it's not clear when 12 gigabytes will start to become insufficient. In terms of performance, the 4070 Super and 7900 GRE are virtually identical for rasterization, but when it comes to ray tracing, the GeForce GPU is generally miles out in front. So if you're mostly interested in RT performance, then the 4070 Super is a no-brainer, but for mostly rasterization performance, you could probably go either way. But again, I think if raster is the priority, then you're better off spending either a little less on the 7800 XT, or quite a bit more on the 7900 XT. So I don't necessarily suggest avoiding the GRE, but based on the results we have here, it's only worth a very small premium over the existing 7800 XT. Anyway, that is going to do it for this re-review of the 7900 GRE. And it was nice to have a look at a few different of the board partner cards. The Power Color Hellhound, for example. This one was particularly impressive. Really liked what we saw out of that one. But anyway, 
If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content, and we also have Float Planner Patreon. Have I mentioned those before? Not sure. But if you do sign up to either one of those, you get access to our exclusive Discord server for members only, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, and QA stuff. So check that out if you're interested. But if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.